did it. I 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 did it. Fucking get in. A nice work. Cool. Oh my god. All right, you need help in the north. I'm yeah. on my fucking way. <laughs> Everyone, turn off force march on the way over, so you can get some morale back. So Reform modifiers plus it. ten morale of armies. Oh, hello, bitch. I just need the Imperials to have more. You're the Imperials. You need how much do I need? I want that. Whatever that is, I want that. A revolutionary empire. Seventy-five. Yeah, bitch. Oh shit! I can totally do it. We are now going to be a revolutionary empire. Wow, she's Napoleon there. Cool. No, morale of armies plus ten. So Manpower plus twenty-five percent. Let's let's fucking go. Oh oh, it's it restarts all of my reforms. Oh fuck. But you get loads of points, right, to spec it out? No, 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 I, no, I don't. I don't have to go through this shit again. No. But my max manpower is up to uh, two point five four six million. Uh, small country, could you leave the siege on luckless redoubt so I can take control? Yeah, because I have better siege ability. Right. Fuck siege ability. Terror I modifier. Just... I hate it. I love yeah, defensiveness. Yeah. It's the only thing that's keeping my country alive. I hate it. I hate it so much. It's so broken. <gasps> oh boy, yeah, that's yeah, a rebellion. 100%. Excellent. Wait. Wait, did you do this? Of course I did. How much did that cost? <laughs> Those are like ridiculous. I don't know, like 6,000 gold? Oh, it's fucking pennies. For you. Yeah, exactly. Finally something to spend my money on. Supporting rebels is kinda based. I I've it's never best. done it. I, I've never, never felt it worth it. Honestly, even this it's does never it's never it's never worth it, but the whole point is that it's, it's the only time it is worth it is when you can just like take away from their micro. Yeah. yeah. Oh I can help I... them with a council of belly. Um the Black Domain's got a lot of troops in, in like my Corvarian land. Actually, it doesn't. Nice. Actually, actually, not a lot of troops, but there's like a lot of individual little stacks of fucking uselessness. It's uh, deception 101. Make it seem like you're bigger than you are. It's, it's irritating. So, we have a verdant paradise. Nobody can reach me now. Well, we could reach your isles. Not with that navy. Not unless we got help. I'd uh, I'd like to point out I've still uh, only ever brought over six hundred thousand troops. Also, you're such a fucking liar. Your troops are not poo poo. Your troops were better than mine. I forget that uh, I have an entire that all my armies are artificer troops. I forget legit got same every artificer buff. Uh, no, no. Oh, I don't no, have like no, all but, the but individual. I have a hundred. I have a hundred and twenty uh, capacity. So I have a hundred and twenty capacity worth of buffs. I like how in in the war between myself and and VG. It came down to the uh, plus 25 war score from uh, winning enough battles. It was like teetering on the edge, like I'd lose a battle and then my war score would drop fucking dramatically. And I wouldn't be able to do the uh, uh, call for peace anymore. And then obviously the other way around, like, it was just mm. balanced, like, really irritatingly. My truce of black domains up. Oh... Everyone's fucking paladin, you might as well come and join. Yeah, it's a diplomatic conference. Free land, don't mind if I do. Oh, this is going to be great for a screenshot. Proof of Loli getting ganked. He ganked if he was still he here, really then like. sure, but I mean like... If only Vern and the Reach would still be in a war with him, then everyone on a continent would be at war mm. with him. Can I no, take I land mean, with uh, yeah. Spread Revolution? Oh. Yeah. Can't I just sell them to you? Yes. Or, you, or just go to war, take them. I have an yeah. heir! Celadorus back, baby! Nice. Don't be What's salty just because my rule is based. Shouldn't we uh, end the session or whatever? Yeah. Couldn't we just. We should just do the last nine years. Alright, I'll be AFK. Or we can do another death war. I, I, I don't need like... another death war. I'm quite happy but with there's that. But like, there's no point doing another session, though. Oh, for fuck's take... sake. <laughs> no, I know. I Instantly, the fucking harpies <laughs> infiltrate my administration. Instantly. They still have friends high up. Ugh. Alright, beer back. <laughs> Lambert, it's your time now. Yeah, here we go again. I'm gonna release Marhold, because 
fucking why not? Marhold without Marhold is cursed. That does hurt my soul. It does. Nah, be alright. No, I actually don't think... Wait. I think the only country I have not been at war with is small country. Uh, uh, for, yeah. for players. Like, the only Kraken. one. Been, really? When have you been I've, at war with I, I've, been at, I've been at war with every player in this lobby. Kraken, Kraken Shaz declared on Sirenvar. Yep. Oh, right, yeah. What about not in Raj? Yeah, they joined in the war against me, and then they had uh, the big right. fucking super gang. Yeah. The big gank where they fought only the centaurs. Which of the big ganks? I mean, also, they joined in against me for, uh, when Ketarada. Yeah, Ketarada. Right, they were also in that, true. Uh, what oh. about me, Cho'Gear? No, actually, I think you're... Oh, you fucking, fucking assault that! Fucking take the fucking assaults! Um, you had troops next to it, you could have taken... You could have just counted I can't paid, like, believe Aerodon just won the war with a single assault. Unbelievable. <laughs> Cringe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. See? See? I just tried to assault fucking Virko Gulen. I did 3,000 casualties and lost 80,000 troops. We just can't run into the mountain. Yeah, well, remember, that province is a, is a hold that's like level 8. Yeah, no, 153% yeah. for defense. Yeah, but you can do it. Uh, um, but yeah, fun, fun shit. I'm gonna do a sign off for the fucking game. Yeah, yeah, man. It's been so fun uh, playing with you guys. Despite all the perks that has been maybe. Fun. See you next season, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah good luck. Alright. Uh, fucking hell. Um, yeah, final session. Ending in 18 to 13. Um, what can I even say, really, to be honest? There was fun, and there was also absolute fucking agony at multiple points. Um, so many ganks, very incredibly unfair wars, people jumping into wars that were fair to make them unfair. Uh, I think roleplay for a lot of people kind of went out the window. Uh, I feel like I kind of kept with my roleplay uh, throughout. I don't feel like I, I broke it at any point, not in any egregious way at least. Uh, we ended this, the game with 420... Uh, K manpower, which I mean, it's clearly based. Um, and yeah, we came out in second place overall, which is pretty pretty dope. Uh, score wise, we ended two thousand points behind first place. I don't know how we just gained the same number every month. I don't know. But yeah, I'll take I'll take a second place. I'll take a fucking solid second place. Um, in in you know. Great power wise, we're in, you know, third place, but yeah, whatever, who cares? Um Yeah. It's fun. And also really painful. Of course we started as glorious little Bursar tenses. And uh Yeah, you just you can see just how fast Keterata can blob up uh, to the point where it's kind of impossible to, to go against it. So there's definitely going to be changes made to various systems, changes made to rules, changes made to what nations are allowed to be played, just in the interests of balance and fairness, um, just to make it fun for everyone instead of, you know, being really irritating and agonizing. Um... But yeah, we'll we'll have to we'll just have to wait and see what we can do. Of course, Keterada being the big early boss, they left after in the middle of the first war. Uh, Van Raha, we needed to get them out of our land. We did that pretty successfully. Uh, they came back in the end, but you know we got them out again as well. So, um, yeah, having like I said, there was only two players, I guess, in the in the game that we were not ever at war with, small country and Telgir. Um, yeah, I mean, Silverforge, I guess, but they died, so it doesn't matter. Um, of the people who ended the game, yeah, those two. Um, but yeah, things, things took a turn, I think. Really, when the big gank started, 
Uh, honestly, Corvuri was like the cork in the bottle um, for for the gankiness. Um, as soon as Corvuri had died, then you know all hell broke loose, and I was basically in a maybe a hundred years of just constant warfare with no breaks whatsoever, which is just fucking exhausting. But, you know, in the end, we we got what we wanted. Didn't manage to keep all of Bulwa, unfortunately, but we got pretty fucking close. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Next season, uh, we're going to wait until the Hales update is out. Um, and I don't know who I'm going to be playing yet, but I'm sure whoever it is, it's going to be a super OP nation with uh, lots of uh, fun to be had, clearly. But yeah, there we go. It is the end of the game. Revolutionary Phoenix Empire. It's a pretty good nation. I do recommend playing as any of the elven substates. Um, specifically, I love the Varamhar one, and I love the uh, Erlium one. Burst Art Hunters is pretty cool, but Varamhar is it's just clearly like head and shoulders above in my opinion um definitely recommend it um but yeah until till next time until we get to play here it's been a fun one and i'm really i'm glad you guys have been watching throughout and uh hopefully you've enjoyed throughout i'm sure there are points that you've enjoyed more than i've enjoyed playing because some points were kind of agony and it's gonna be fun trying to edit that uh, but anyway uh i've rambled and i'm gonna say uh thanks all for watching if you would like to support the channel patreon's link in the description um it helps me out especially considering you know doing this editing stuff takes a shit ton of time but until next time thanks all for watching and bye bye toodles Across the Serpent Spine Mountains to the east lies Hales, the largest continent on Halan. It is a land marked by the convergence of its geography and its history. It's a land dominated by towering temples that were left by the precursor civilization, focal points for its various religions. But it is also a land that is alive. The spirits of nature and of people long dead are able to influence everything from the day-to-day -day lives of its people to the fate of its empires. While the region's civilization arose in the plains of the upper Karanyana and Yanhi rivers, the most important event that shaped the entire region was just after the day of ashen skies. A people of ascendant tigers appeared in southern Rahen and quickly conquered the region. Led by Harimar the Great, their conquests continued until they reached all over Hales. They brought with them a new religion, a philosophy that emerged from old Raheni practices, and a fascination with the high temples of Hales and their supposed high gods. This high philosophy dominated the urban regions of Rahen and Yanshen, and carried with it the imperial hierarchy. Though Harimar disappeared into the Great Temple in Tianlu, this hierarchy remained in some form in both Rahen and Yanshen until Jehur invaded from Bulwa in 1038 and shook up the region. The Phoenix Empire covered the old Harimari hierarchies of Rahen and Yanshen until it fractured in 1126 with his assassination in Tianlu. Afterwards, his son Jerael tried to hold together his empire, but it wouldn't last long. His death in 1138 marked the end of this brief period of consolidation and plunged Halles back into a period of warlords. In Rahan, just across the border from Sahal, the tiger-like Harimari have formed a mighty yet disunited Raj, stretching from the Serpent Spine in the north and the Gulf of Rahan in the south. This land is rich in natural resources, and were one to unite the Raj, they would be immensely wealthy and powerful. To the north of the Raj, and a threat that none in Hales can ignore, is the Command. The warlike hobgoblins rose up not too long ago. Disciplined and ruthless, they washed over the northern ruined kingdoms of Shamakad, and defeated all that opposed them. They now prepare their next conquests in the lands of Xianji and further into Rahan. It would take a very determined foe to stand against this tide of violence. To the east of the command, in the Demon Hills, lay the ancient kingdom of the Oni. 
as Jakuma, said to predate even the precursor elves of old. They maintain an uneasy peace with the command, trading their magics in exchange for a truce. Although they have remained isolationist for a millennia, a change has been brewing and the ogres may soon look outward. Beyond the demon hills lay the lands of Yan Shen, a region of various warlord states. Between the eunuch states that rose up after the fall of the Haramage lies the merchant republic of Baekdugang, one of the few nations to not look towards their Yan neighbours to exploit, but to the seas beyond. In the middle of the Yan Shen lies the League of Yan Zhen, an alliance of city-states, including the secretive city of Yin Shen, said to have spies that reach all across the continent. To the south of Yan Shen, across the Fokao range, is South Hales. To the very southern tip lies the nation of Arokalin, a remnant state of the Phoenix Empire originally serving as a port from which Jaher fueled his conquest of Yan Shen. They now consist of Kalino, a mixed people who absorb the best of each culture that inhabits their land, taking influence from both the Sun Elves, Yan, the local Yanglam pagans, as well as perhaps the Kanorians in the distant future. To their north is the nation of Honsai, a state that formed from civil war in Bai Honjing. The previous emperor has managed to cling to his realm by sheer willpower, ruling from his palace as a ghost, seeking to unite his realm once more. As a result, they start in a civil war that may just determine the fate of all Kai. Sarasung is the largest city in Hales by metric of population. It is located on the east bank of the Karunyana in the region of Xianji. It is one of the porcelain cities, and its politics are dominated by the local gangs who fight for control amongst each other of the various districts of the city. Xianji rests between the holy Mount Tokayasa, the mighty river Karunyana, the towering Fokau range, and the forbidding demon hills. It sits between Rahen, Yanshen, and Southern Hales, and so has been marked by and left its mark on all three of them. The people of Xianji are among the most zealous followers of the righteous path in all Hales, and for centuries they have been organized under the Jayaken, the great martial temples nestled in its valleys, shrouded in its jungles, are perched atop its mountains, which oversee the care and organization of Xianji's people. None are more sacred than that of the Jai Dao, the point of balance within the universe, which lies at the heart of Xianji, and indeed all of Hales. It is certain that in the coming years, the people of Hales's desire for independence and their desire for peace will meet with terrible hostility. In the inevitable conflict, we must unite or be drowned in blood. Hidarion Tananzuir, speaking to his troops before the Battle of Lekton Mai, 1441. Standing resolute against the rumbling powers at their borders, the Kai townships have always been a picture of provincial simplicity. Their stalwart republican traditions and fearsome guerrilla tactics have guaranteed independence since the death of Jurail the last great unifier of Hales, and the collapse of the Eastern Phoenix Empire. Since its collapse, they have yet to rise to any real importance in regional politics, instead acting as a series of buffer states between the Com Empire to the south and the Xia to their north. Unlike many of their neighbours, the Kai harboured no particular animosity towards the elves left in the wake of the Phoenix Empire's hasty retreat from Hales instead integrating them into their republics. The largest of these fledgling communities is in Azkara's own Citadel of the Dawn, an old Jahirian stronghold still occupied by the descendants of his soldiers, and it's from this stock of elves that an unlikely figure would rise to become Lord of Azkara. In 1438, Hidarion Tananzuir, a Sunrise Elf who had faithfully served several generations of Azkara Lords, was elected as Lord of Azkara, the smallest of the four townships. An Elf of unending ambition, he began to reform nearly every aspect of the state, culminating in 1441 when the newly formed Shining Lancers, 
a legion of elite elven cavalry tracing their roots back to Jahur's legion, soundly defeated the combined arms of Kao Elnak and Lo Ngoen in the Battle of Lekton Mai. Hidarion's ambition did not end on that battlefield. He returns home to Azkara with renewed fervour, dreaming of unity. With a com to the south in the midst of a brutal civil war which transcends the boundaries of mortality, and the Xia to the north threatened by a renewed push from the Hobgoblin Command, there has been no better time for resurgent elven rule. Will Azkara remain a final footnote in the history of elven rule on the continent, or will they blossom anew to build a final, peaceful Halesi Empire?